What's going on, print fam? If you're new, my name's Cam. Welcome to The Print Life. I get asked all the time to put together an exposure unit inexpensively. This is for people that are just getting into it as a hobby. They don't want to put a bunch of money into this whole thing yet. I got a great idea for a portable exposure unit. So let's tackle this and see if we can't do it with just crap that I have laying around the shop. First thing on the checklist is a little, uh, little square of foam. You can secure foam from couch cushions. You could literally find them in the dump. Next thing we're going to need is a piece of glass. I have got myself an old picture frame that's just been chilling here because I haven't put anything in it yet. But guess what? The other thing that we are going to need is a screen. I've seen a lot of people that claim you can make screens at home and blah, blah, blah. I tried that when I first started out spent tons of time and effort only to produce a subpar product. You don't have the equipment to properly stretch a screen to the tensions you need to do a good quality print. These can be had in a five pack for, and put the price right here because I can't remember off the top of my head. It's almost nothing. You can reclaim them, you can reuse them over and over and over again. Don't waste your time or effort trying to stretch your own screens. Buy static aluminum screens in the mesh count that you want. If you're just starting out, I would just recommend getting a bunch of 110s. That's what we're gonna use today. This next situation is a little bit more complex. I wonder if this will work. What we're doing is we're looking for a box that will fit a screen in it with a little bit of room around the sides. That box isn't gonna work. Let's see what else I got. There we go. This isn't the cheapest option, but I have it laying around. A suitcase. You can use a cardboard box, you can use Tupperware, you can use any form of case or box that has a lid on it that has the dimensions to allow your screen to set inside of it. I'm gonna need a smaller piece of glass. I'm gonna put this one back. This one's a little bit smaller, maybe even too small, but look at that. It will fit on top of the screen. So it'll work in a pinch, but ideally you will have the glass at least reach out to the farther outside of the screen. Because if you don't do that, you run the risk of having the unfinished edge of glass bust the, the mesh. When it comes to handling this glass, the edges, man, are just razor sharp. So handle with care. You can grab a piece of sandpaper and just finish the edge. When you're doing it, be careful. You can slice your shit open. And I feel like this goes without saying, clean your glass thoroughly. No spots, no junk that could affect the burning of your screen. I have all the raw materials that I need. Let's start assembling this thing. And I think you could probably already figure out what we're gonna do, but we're gonna go over it anyway so that you got a good understanding of the concept. What we gotta do now is take our foam and cut it to fit the inside of the screen. And I'm gonna cut the foam to leave about a half, maybe three quarters of an inch gap all the way around it. Inside diameter, long ways is a uh, 17. So we're gonna reduce a half inch on each side. So let's just call it 16, 14 inches wide. 16 by 14. Voila, voila, voila. Another step that you can take is to put some sort of black fabric around the foam. Old black t-shirt, that should work, huh? So it's just a nice smooth coating over the foam. And uh, this is a very high tech and complicated process here that we're gonna do next. Grab your foam, place it inside the case. God damn, that was tricky. Once you've assembled all your components, you're gonna need to get situated in a light sensitive room. So I have my foam in here, I have my screen, my glass, and I have my film. As far as getting or acquiring your film, that is another step. I have a video uh, that I did a long time ago with some alternative affordable ways to make films for yourself, and I'll link that up here. For this video, we're gonna assume that you already have the film positive thing sorted out. I was showing you guys an uncoated screen for demo purposes, but once you have the box, you're gonna need a screen that's actually been coated with emulsion and with movie magic. Boom, there we go, coated screen. Also, the lights are off. 
When you're setting this up, when it's actually time to start setting your screens up, you're gonna need to be in a light-proof environment. Some light will be okay as long as you work quickly, uh, but the idea is to get out of the way of any UV rays. So the film will be reading wrong side up. It'll be reading backwards. Once you've got it positioned more or less where you want it, you can grab yourself a couple pieces of scotch tape. You can tape the top and the bottom or the sides, whatever you want to do. And now I'm going to simply lay my glass over the top. What the glass is ultimately doing is sandwiching the film between the screen and the glass, which makes a nice tight seal to prevent light from leaking underneath the black areas of your film positive. Everything is sandwiched up nicely. Now we're ready to burn this bad boy. So I'm going to cover it with the lid. Carry it outside, open it up, and let the sun expose this thing. I ended up setting or doing it for 30 seconds, but I would say take it down to about 15 because I was overexposed. It was hard to wash out. More than likely going to be washing the screen out in an environment that has some light leaking through, so you need to work quickly. You need to remove the glass, remove the film, and get the screen wet as fast as possible. So I place it in there and I'm just using a sink. You can do anything. You can do this in the backyard. Wet both sides. Uh, and then you're just going to start working it. Now, like I said earlier, I did this at 30 seconds and it ended up overexposing it. So the emulsion was a little bit harder to wash out than it should be. And now that I've washed it out, I'm just dabbing it dry with a towel. Um, another little thing is if you have access to an air compressor, you can use the air compressor to blow the... The, the water off the screen and now I'm using emulsion to just patch up some pinholes just use the same emulsion you used to coat it with and now I'm using a spatula to do some some close detail work you know now I'm gonna pop it outside and post expose it this just hardens it it's not a necessary step I just do it because it dries it faster oh that's hot oh that's hot the tape to tape uh this scene is way too long there you go boys and girls we just made this screen holding great detail utilizing the most inexpensive exposure unit that you can possibly get your hands on little side note if you decide that you need a little bit more control maybe you want to burn screens in the evening or at night head into the description of this video there's a link to amazon for a 500 watt led light that thing is super powerful we retrofitted our exposure unit with that light you still get exposures in like 20 or 30 seconds. So if you don't like the idea of having to use the sun, just replace the sun with this LED light and you'll be good to go.